Roy Media, we're bringing the world closer to your doorstep. Waiting, we carry for her. I said, they never know. Waiting, we carry for body. Oh, in the lodge, I hear in the wound, oh, la, Kasi chef, oh, le, baba, wa. Kasi chef, oh, ilu, baba, wa. Kajuma so wapo kale kodudu aga Kodudu wapo bale kewa Omo odudu a shigiri Edide fun weto wadula wo Kale joju mante Kele ileri Kawale kwa oko ilewa Kasi she kale jok bade Kale bade ade adula wo Awani mante ti yotan kakiri Awa lange to la ruge Eto topo jogo Jiwa mani Kasa Ekwe kulu waja waka je buba inje Eto topo jogo Jiwa mani Ante so la ruge Anta sa la ruge Eto topo jogo Jiwa mani News and sports E marigo Eto topo jogo Oh my jebu ala remi lo ni ki ma ke tata Go yi ki mi dia, alo la kwa ti mo mi yo Ma ba se re lo Oh my yoruba ni ye, oh my yoruba tata I'm tadu re, oh my jebu ala remi She yi lo ma fi di bo te mo le ho E yi lo mo ni bo ma ande ma de ma de E yi lo mo ni bo ma wo ma wo ma wo ho Ibo ma wo ta jo jo bo do wo A jo ji do ba wo be A te ne ne bo ra E e yi lo ma na wo O yi bo to de I ba to yi bo de ho O wo na de tu pa si ho Ko yi ki mi da Sa wa ni ba ba I want it, Baba. I dance so, I don't play reggae. I want it, Baba. I want language to la ruge je kajobo. I want it, Baba. I punta feto ilewa, feto ile yoruba. Omo duwa niwa o, toka toka. Ekuto se bi le bi o si adi mu baba yo. We bring you up closer to your doorstep. A be be to be o to kangi o kolara ni. A be reggae de bolodu mare lo fun wa she. Gogo aye ekbo. I want you, Baba. Oh, I want you, Baba. Hey, Mambo, I have people who are trying you out. I want you, Baba. Oh, Dudu, I like with Danny. Oh, Tito, I like with Danny. I want you, Baba. I want you, Baba. I want you, Baba. I want you, Baba. We bring 
you walk closer to your doorstep. Oh, you give me that Isara. Ah, Isara no. They decide to me. Ladies <laughs> protest ilu nigeria mi ori bi ti mo ti enikan le so pe mo pa yen tabi mo do nkan na tabi mo ba nkan je mo lo pisu tori pe olowo le mi na ti o ba so lowo lara ndi mo gbogbo nkan ta lo fun yen lo fun mi mi se ta laka to te pe mo dide fun ja yoruba big man mi awon to je ore mi to sun mo mi to ni owo ni kini mo wa lo be pe so wo le mi mo nfe ni kin so yi ti mo fe mo ni so ro wo ani oro iran mi ni mo nso kin wo kin wo gbo kin gbera kin pe mo lo do ba gbo mo lo do ni bodo fi gbo ho kin kojo wole kokan mi bale kin da wa moto ki mo rin bo ki fulani mo da mi do ntiti kin dele ki baba so pe kin gbe tras tire la su ki mo gbe lo a baba wo le loko mo won o le lodo e je ka fo osu opo ka ti awon baba wa leyin ka da security ti wa le ka so fun won kan ba wa fowo ti ka le won ko onu oko wa e se mo dupe jesu oluwa wa And a very good evening and welcome once again to Koiki Media Live. Moki Bubo Wahwe, welcome once again to this late night conversation. And I welcome you as you're joining. Uh, please share the program and invite your friends and family. Uh, tonight, Oni Awon Roti Mofe, Biwasiwa Juwa Latara, Awon Kostamari, Nipa. Nigeria at I want to one try a lot to push narrative way Nigeria has to remain one. First and foremost, let me appreciate uh, our leader, uh, Professor Adebanji Akitoye, the leader of the Yoruba Self Determination Group, and likewise all the leaders in the movement. Moki Babawa Oloye, Dr. Sonja Deyemo, Kibubu, all different organizations that are working back to back. My name is Olami Koiki. I am one of the campaigners of this movement, and likewise, we have a lot of campaigners as well that are working tirelessly. 
We would like to appreciate you as you join the program. Remember that this platform is not anything more than, you know, asking for the right of the Yoruba people to exit Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria was created, you know, in 1914 uh, by Britain, uh, you know, for a reason known to them, without a lot of consultation with the indigenous people. 63 years after the independence, many believe that uh, it is now time for Nigeria to come to a conclusion and a closing end. We would like to appreciate some of our past leaders, like Professor Jeremiah Awulowo and the rest of those that are still talking about how the Yoruba people should leave Nigeria peacefully. As we send greetings to all those past leaders, we also appreciate the present one. Uh, we are on a full broadcast, and I hope that you can hear me loud and clear. If you can, please let us know in the comment section. Tonight, um, I will be taking us through a particular conversation that I picked up you know, from the mainstream media in Nigeria. It's a Yoruba man that many of us know very well, known as Dr. Akiwumi Adishino. Mokibugwe iti eti darakwamawa ate iti efigbawa moki e igrama moki princess adibimpe adini yi awo awo ni yi ade yemi awo ni yi. Moki olori eko, moki Mr. Matthew Idowo, please uh, share this program because it's a very, very important that we continue to say to some of our elites what we want. Moki Buba Mwaba Lori Ade Lati Babawa Ojaja the second Moki Babawa Awujale Moki Babawa Alake Moki Babawa Teju Osho Moki Amoba Ile Yoruba Fukwa Na Omo Yoruba Ti Ansof Mkwe Afe Kuro Nino Nigeria Sometimes they might be listening to people like Mr. or Dr. Akimumi Adishino. And that is the reason why people like us have to come out quickly and correct him. He's well educated, very highly intelligent, and also in a position that he might be giving a wrong impression. We hope that people like this can work with Babakitoye and start designing a Yoruba economy ahead before we finally leave Nigeria. Opolokwa Mono Yoruba, Lisopi, Yoruba nation is not going to come. We are not here to argue with you because most of you are idiots. But we are here to tell you that Nigeria will come to an end and it is finally getting to that stage. So as I'm just going to start the last platform, uh, which is my Twitter space, uh, let us send a direct message to Dr. Akinwumi Adishino. He is also the African, the African Development Bank Group president. Dr. Akinwumi, uh, like I said, is a Yoruba man. Probably maybe he doesn't understand what Nigeria stands for. And this is why we will now educate him a little bit that the country called Nigeria cannot be restructured and we cannot be going into what we call United States of Nigeria, which is what he is proposing. But we will be very happy and delighted. Uh, that does not stop his position where he is right now. But for him to be saying that we need to start talking about United States of Nigeria. I don't know what he means by that, but we will try to see as many of what that means to you and me. I will try my best in my own capacity to talk about what he said and to also see why we have to re-educate some of our elites. I'm also Yoruba, but please bear with me. This program will also be in English. I remember that uh, some of us doesn't know who Akimumi Adeshino is. So it's important that we give us some of the background so that you can have a better understanding 
uh, uh, I believe, if I'm not wrong, that it was at some point work with the uh, Jonathan administration. He's a well-read man, like I said, um, known around the world, have a lot of award, uh, but it seems that his position today telling us to try to get a united state of nigeria is where we will disagree with him we respect him we love him and we hope that this my program will not be anything than an advice as a brother to him we will appreciate if he can come back home and start talking about the vision of Awolowo because i believe uh, he was he got an award not too long uh, than a world war event that took place in Lagos, uh, I believe, uh, some few weeks back, if I'm right. Uh, many people have talked about him. Dr. Akil Maideshina said, the prophet of progress and development. Um, so I'm going to first uh, try to see why many of these individuals still are Baba Bakito Yeshishe. We hope that at some point they will watch a program like this. It is important that you let him get this my video so that we can tell him that we don't want anything called United States of Nigeria. Nigeria was not created by God. Nigeria was not created by us, the indigenous people of Yorubas. Nigeria was created by Britain for a special reason known to them. So this evening, I will be taking us through series of what we need to know. But let us first allow Dr. Deshino we are possible that even though he worked with Jonathan, but because these men are very busy, they have a lot of schedule, they have a lot of meeting, they fly in private jets from one end to the other around the globe because of the nature of his job. So he might probably not have come across certain things that Jonathan must have said after Jonathan left. First and foremost, I'm sure Dr. Deshino knows that this is the whole country that was cre you know, you know, you know, colonized by Britain for over 200 years. Like I said, we are not fighting him tonight. We are just calling his attention back to reality. There is nothing called Nigeria that will stand. Nigeria is collapsing and it's going to collapse very, very fast. So if Dr. Akiwumi Adeshino is still in the hope that we will fix Nigeria is not speaking the truth and let's start to give him this video to start with how we've been having this conversation about the unity of Nigeria and I reflect back at some of the prominent statements made by some of our founding leaders. And I feel that probably this will help us to have a conversation on the Nigerian unity. I just brought four, not to bore you. First, and I'm quote, and I quote, not my statement, Nigeria is not a nation. It's a mere geographical expression. There are no Nigerians in the same sense as there are English, Welsh, or French. The word, the word Nigerian is merely a distinctive appellation to distinguish those who live within the boundaries of Nigeria from those who do not. This is accredited to Chief Obafemi Awolowo, the former Prime Minister of the Western Region. The second one, and I quote, it is true that we politicians always delight in talking loosely about the unity of Nigeria. Sixty years ago, there was no country called Nigeria. 
what is now Nigeria consisted of several large and small communities, all of which were different in their outlooks and beliefs. The advent of the British and that of Western education has not materially altered the situation, and the, men, and the many and varied communities have not knit themselves into a composite unit. This is accredited to Sir Amado Bello, former Premier of Northern Region. They thought, and I quote, since 1914, the British government has been trying to make Nigeria into one country. But the Nigerian people themselves are historically different in their backgrounds, in their religious beliefs and customs, and do not show themselves any sign of willingness to unite. The Nigerian unity is only a British intention for the country. Impediment to Yoruba development is the impediment to Yoruba development. Without Nigeria, we won't be where we are. 1962, we were far ahead of South Korea and North Korea. We were far ahead of China even. We had television before France. We had radio before South Africa. Now look at where we are today. I think it's a shame that even any Yoruba man can be talking about restructuring at this point in time. What are we restructuring? This, this, this country that is already shot to pieces? I don't think that's what we want. But they are always talking about giving Nigeria a chance. The process of Yoruba Niger with Nigeria has come to an end. So let's move swiftly into the conversation. Uh, Dr. Akiomi Adeshino, in an headline that came out in all the dailies in Nigeria, is proposing restructuring and calling it United States of Nigeria. That is coming from the Punch newspaper. He also on the cable, Akimomi Adeshino proposes United States of Nigeria. So we will look into all this discussion tonight. But before we do that, uh, we need to get a background of who Dr. Akimomi Adishino is. It is important that we know the individual that we are talking about. Let me get my camera in as well. Uh, bear with me once again a very good evening and welcome to the program. My name is Olaomi Koiki. And many people know me as Koiki Media, where we discuss self-determination. First and foremost, if anybody asks us what and why is the reason why we do not want to have a United States of Nigeria, which Dr. Akimumi Adishino is proposing, the reason could be linked to this maybe Akim Adishino does not know. What we want is our true identity, our own Yoruba language, our own constitution. We can have him even as our first prime minister if he wants to. I believe he's well qualified. Set up our own judicial system, have our own system of government look after ourselves and protect each and every one of indigenous people good evening to you mr larry morning and those of you that are joining us on instagram and those of you that are listening on the twitter space so akiumi adeshino con is a nigerian economist who is currently serving as the president of the African Development Bank Group. He previously served as Nigeria Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development until his appointment as minister in 2010. He was the vice president of the Policy and Partnership for the Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa. And the Alliance for Green Revolution 
He was elected as the president of the African Development Bank in 2015, and he has now also been re-elected for the second term in 2020. He is the first Nigerian to hold the post. Let's look at his early life and education. At Dr. Kiwumi, Adeshina was born to a Nigerian farmer in Ibadan, or your state. He attended a village school and had a bachelor degree in agricultural economics with a first class honor from the University of Ife, now known as Obafemi Aulowo University. So these are again product of Baba Ulawo, but is now calling for the United States of Nigeria. He graduated in Nigeria in 1991. He was the first student to be awarded this distinction by the university. He pursued further study at Purdue University, Indiana, and he briefly returned to Nigeria in 1984 to get married. He obtained his PhD in Agricultural Economics in 1988 from Purdue, where he won an outstanding PhD thesis for his research work, The Blood of Yoruba in Him. Career from 1990 to 1995. That was when I was coming out of secondary school. Additionally, served as a senior economics at the West African Rice Development Association in Bokwa in Ivory Coast. He worked at the Rockefeller Foundation since winning a fellowship from the foundation as a senior scientist in 1998. From 1999 to 2003, he was representative of the foundation for South African area. From 2003 to 2008, he was an Associate Director for Food Security, which Yoruba land does not have again today because of the Fulani terrorists on our territory. Dr. Kiyomi Adishina was a Nigerian Agricultural Minister from 2010 to 2015. Adishina was named the Forbes African Man of the Year for his reform of Nigerian agriculture, which no one can be proud of today. He also said that he would give away mobile phones to farmers, but this proved too difficult. Again, because a country like Nigeria, additional would not have been able to do such, even if he had intention to transform Nigeria to what it is today. So all this is the reason why we have to continue to highlight that our Yoruba elite that still believe in one Nigeria, even though he was unable to change the matter and change the narrative while he was the president and what I'm sorry, while he was the you know one of the ministers during Jonathan. He also said that he would give away mobile phones to farmers, but this proved too difficult. One of the reasons was lack of a mobile network in the country areas. It shows that the lack of infrastructure in Nigeria meant that it was unable for him to do such a project. But in 2010, United States General Secretary then Ban Ki-moon appointed him as one of the 17 global leaders to spearhead the Millennium Development Goals, which I can tell you that Nigeria did not meet up to that goal. The United Nations Millennium Goal were eight international development goals for the year 2015, created following the Millennium Summit following the adoption of the United States Millennium Declaration. That's another topic for another day. On the 28th of May, 2015, Dr. Kimumi Adishina was elected presumptive president of the African Development Bank. He began his tenure of the office on the 1st of September, 2015, just as Sebaba was settling into Nigeria. And remember that for six months, when Buhari came to power, he did not appoint any minister even though Adishina already left. In September 2016, Adishina was appointed the United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon to serve as member of the lead group of scaling up nutrition movement. Many Nigerians today are not eating a proper balanced diet. That means there will be many children that will be in Koshoko. Many of you are losing your sight because you are drinking too much Gary. Many of you are not eating enough nutrients to keep you going. And that is why, according to the World Health Organization, you are not likely to survive 55 years if you are living in Nigeria 
But if you live somewhere in Japan, you are likely to live up to 85 years according to the life expectancy. In 2017, it was awarded 2017 World Food Prize. And on August 27, 2022, Adishina was again re-elected as the president of the African Development Bank for a second term of five years. Let's look at his personal life. While at Pondo University, Adishina and his wife, along with another couple, started a Christian group called the African Student Fellowship. He and his wife, Grace, have three children, Rotimi, Emmanuel, and Shegun. In recognition, Adishina was cited as one of the top 100 most influential Africans by the New African Magazine. And that always takes me back to what Babakitoye told us. Each time I see Nigerians, we then look at the name and we realize that these are Yoruba that are doing very well. If we go back to what Babakitoye told us uh, quickly in this um, article that we've been treating, Babaki Toye made it very clear. Uh, let's see if, if I can bring that up into this. Babaki Toye made it clear to us that the reason why you would find out that the Yorubas are the one doing very well around the world is because we have Yorubas that have done well because of our education that was embedded in us by the late legend um, the late legend uh, Jeremy Awulawo. So if I look into this quickly, um, okay, it's not going to open that way. So what are you going to do? I'm going to come back to that, uh, you know, later. But I have it here. At independence, remember I told you this a lot of time. Nigeria, at independence in 1960, Nigeria was truly the economic giant and the hope of Africa. Nigeria was 25% of the population of Black Africa. One of the regions of the Nigerian Federation, the Western region, had the most intensely educated population in Africa. So we should not be surprised to see that this particular legend has done so well from itself and likewise for the Yoruba race. So every time you hear the name Dr. Akimumi Adishino, let's say is one of our pride as a Yoruba man. But what we do not agree with him tonight is the calling that we should now restructure Nigeria to call it the United States of Nigeria. So again, just before we show you a video that during the inaugural lecture, as Buhari, the crazy evil monster, the, the evil sadist, was leaving power and Tinubu was coming in. This was 10 months ago precisely. Nigeria needs to do more in the rural electrification. He was advising Tinubu and also Buhari in that lecture. We're going to listen to that in just about a few minutes. But one thing I want us to keep our mind on is, why is this our Yoruba elite talking about trying to rectify something that everybody knows clearly that it is just not going to work. Maybe, again, like I said, he's a busy man, but if you're one of the friends, the family of Dr. Akim Adishino, let him watch this particular broadcast today, and he will learn a lot about the country he's still proposing of still holding together, even though the crumbles of Nigeria is going down. Because it will affect even himself. It will affect all the APC powers. It will affect all the MDs of banks. The MDs of banks are the destroyer of this system. The powerful, the high and the mighty. He, will, he is stepping on their toes. I pray God give him the grace to do it. The next thing he should do, tell him if you know him, is to restructure this country. Nigeria is a fraud. One particular tribe repressing the whole of us. You do hear what Central Bank Governor wants to do? Just a department, the operation department of Central Bank, to be moved back to Lagos, where you have 99% of the headquarters of bank. The North is agitated. 
Don't take Abuja back to Lagos. They don't care. If you all become beggars, it's okay for their oligarchic mentality. I talk like no other pastor talk. I talk like no other pastor talk. Because I have seen into governance, I have seen into the church. And I know where the problem is in this country. Are you hearing me? They may not like what I'm saying, but they cannot dispute the truth. This country cannot go on like this. Okay, I was talking about those who migrated. I don't blame those that want to jackpa. You know, initially I was saying don't jackpa. Do you hear me say that again? Jackpa if you want to jackpa. Because you look at the country and say what future? If it goes on like this, what future? If it goes on like this, civil war is imminent. If it goes on like this, military intervention is imminent. Do we want to go back to that? No. no. Something must happen. I have always believed that something must happen. Do you see the way we pray in this church? Make Nigeria one. We don't pray. Nigeria is not one and it can never be one. We are different nations tied together by force. We should still be one country. But let everyone govern itself the way he likes. Are you hearing me? Let the Niger Delta have their oil. Let the East have their resources. Let the Yoruba people have their resources. Let the North have their resources. Let them manage their security. Give them state police. Let everybody guard his borders. Let everybody generate his economy. Why must you generate oil in the Niger Delta and take it to the North? Why must we generate uh, uh, IGR here or the VATs and take it to the North that generate nothing? The 10 key Northern states have Sharia. Sharia says no to alcohol. Sharia says no to tobacco. But alcohol and tobacco is what give us VAT here. And you take the money from there to spend where you say you don't want, but you like the money. Uh, fraud. Fraud, 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 unfairness, injustice. Where did we sit down to make Nigeria 36 states? Where did we sit down? Nigeria was negotiated three regions. North, West, East, 1963, by plebiscite. Midwest came in. Where did we sit down and say we shall be 36 states? Plus Abuja, and the biggest one taken to the north. More local governments. Then we came with federal character. You are qualified, but from the tribe you came from, you can't be qualified. Now, you can't pass any law in that National Assembly without Northern approval. They are in larger quantity. Deliberately made so. So how do we go from there? There is no land called Nigeria. There is no language called Nigeria. There are no people called Nigerians. We are only deceiving ourselves. We are not Nigerian. Ah, okay. Where is Nigeria? As a, where is the land called Nigeria? Where is the what is the Nigerian language? We are nations that had been forced together to live in one pathetic country. So anybody who goes there today to say uh, pray for Nigeria, that person is just deceiving himself because the people who want to be that Nigeria had not sat down to agree if they want to be Nigeria. Once again, a very good evening to Dizzy Man 123. Uh, Yoruba self-determination is an inalienable right that cannot be taken away from us. The Yoruba people, home and abroad, Yoruba, one culture, one language. Peter Pan, Yoruba nation and Biafra will create a healthy, needed competition this will lead to innovation and a better future. It is time to build for Africa. Peter Pan said, United States of Biafra, Igbos are tired of this slave called contraction. Silver Badmore says, sir, in fact, I like this program you bring up fast on the way. Imagine there another amalgamation, the United States of Nigeria. So what they are planning is to continue to keep us inside Nigeria with this country that many of us are tired already. So that is the reason why we're not here to fight our brother, our uncle. We are only here to talk about why we disagree with him on this particular part. Uh, Mr. Bamidele Mohammed, good evening to you. And also, Abadie Wasu, if you're watching me from other platforms across board, 
I welcome you into this program. My name is Olami Koiki, and Niola Akindele, and to all the Koiki Media team, I say good evening. If you still want to support us voluntarily, uh, so that we can be able to keep up with the media work, those are the details that is easy for you to do all the donation. Let me appreciate, uh, you know, one or two of our Biafra brothers that continue to also support this media, uh, even though I haven't seen you maybe on the thread, but I keep seeing that your contribution coming through. I say thank you so much. I will do a bit of Yoruba for the benefit of our audience. In Tia and Solo, the Lori Nibabawa, Dr. Akiwumi Adeshino, Nino Awata, Jishetu Jadi, Nino Pepa, Nino Nigeria, one sofu Nigerians at Ijoba Baye, Weki Alosi, in Tonkweni, United States of Nigeria. Ama Salaye, Kanto Kosi, Nino Pepa, Yeniti Punch, at the Kebu, at the Pepa, Bebelo. Uh, and so nipa in your job, Baba, in a lack of call, if you took out, we see at you go, you go to Bakakiri. Baba, in the current African development president, Oshishela Be Jonathan Re, as a minister of agriculture, even though Bubu project of Asia could reach a delay, later the lack of infrastructure in Nigeria. Kilowa de Tiran Baba, you feel Baba Bakito, she share. Latinly, we in a Yoruba nation, why are they still talking about Nigeria? Even though if I don't know what BC or Bapemia will know what you may fairly see in the Lutica way to buy Uye to Pore, but they could do the good test. Why do you open our city in 1980? That's what she ya wo Kilo de Tiran Baba buy our elite wife to wash in free force in Nigeria. Even the as evidence continue to point that Nigeria is not working. Shout out to you, Egwami Simon Adebisi Sokoi Boya Ignorance Loshi, Dr. Akiwumi. But you would think that somebody that's got honorary degree, we've read all his, you know, his, uh, his outstanding achievement. But why then he's still talking about keeping Nigeria, knowing fully well that Nigeria is not working. So let me not call names again. Let's move straight into the program. Muki Mrs. Angelica Joke, and as many of you that are joining us on the Instagram, and those of you that are watching me live on Twitter, and we are also live on the Twitter space. Please share this program, and most importantly, if your friend or colleagues of network to, I don't have his number, if I have it, I'll send him a text uh, or WhatsApp with the link of this video so that he will have the privilege to send, maybe listen, and he'll probably reflect back. So let's take you to Abuja 10 months ago when Dr. Akeun Additional delivered this inaugural lecture. This is not my copyright. It is for TVC. We're only using it for educational purpose. I'm going to mute my mic. It's about 23 minutes. I will pick something along the line. I might come out of the video and we might come back in again. Bear with me. Remember that this video is not mine, but we'll use it as much as we can tonight. Introduced innovations that made the African Development Bank Group achieve the highest capital increase since its inception in 1964. Dr. Adeshina has been honored with several awards, and in 2017 he was conferred with the World Food Prize, also known as the Nobel Prize for Agriculture. Dr. Adishino was also announced as the winner of the 2020 Distinguished Fellowship Award by the Academy of Public Health, the flagship body of the West African Institute of Public Health in December 2020. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Akimumi Adishino, President, African Development Bank, AFDB, strengthening the Nigerian economy. Your Excellency, President Mohamedou Buhari, I also call him a father as well. Your Excellency, the President-elect, Paula Ametunumbu, 
Your Excellency, the Vice President-elect, but their brother, Excellency Chatima. Your Excellency, President Uhuru Kenyatta, he and I have known each other forever. Former President of the Republic of Kenya, the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, but their brother, Boss Mustafa, and thank you for all you did to get me here. I finished the annual meetings of the African Development Bank, Mr. President, yesterday at about midnight, and I had to get on the flight to be here this morning. That's why I came in late here. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary. Excellencies, Governors, Your Eminence, Your Royal Highnesses, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, Friends of Nigeria, Beloved Nigerians. I wish to start by thanking you, Mr. President, for inviting me to the ceremonies for the swearing in of the incoming president, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu. I would like to congratulate you, Mr. President, for this achievement of the seventh democratic transition of our beloved country. I would like to congratulate the incoming president and also the incoming vice president. I wish to thank the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, the Chairman and members of the transition, Presidential Transition Council. Uh, you just bear with me. I will be interrupting so that uh, YouTube doesn't believe that we're just using the video without the analysis around it. Uh, I'm just going to pick this particular comment that just came to my screen, which I believe is very important because you might not see because I don't have all the link of the uh, the comment on the screen, which we're working on very soon. Simon Adebisi said, this is another foreign plot uh, currently on the going on the ground. Massive, huge, and will be vastly unleashed. Maybe we don't have the evidence. Maybe Dr. Kiyomi Adeshina is part of the plot for an unknown intent and motive. This is just maybe. There's no evidence to back this. But someone like him speaking on this vision of United States of Nigeria. So maybe I should read a little bit. We come back to that video so that it will not look like we are just sitting down watching the video alone. So let me quickly give us the, the, you know, some of what was said in this headline on the Punch newspaper, which is still the same day today, the 30th of March 2024. And the headline says, Restructuring the AFDB boss, Dr. Akiomi Adeshino, proposes, let's look at the English word for propose or proposes. Propose. P-R-O-P-O-S-E. Papa Romeo Oscar, Papa Oscar Sarah Echo. Propose. Dr. Akiomi Adeshino is. Propose. Is put forward a plan or suggestion for consideration by others. While the Yoruba people are talking about self-determination, while we are discussing that the Biafra should go, the area where should go, the Middle East should go, Dr. Kim Adeshino is what? Propose. Who and who is he proposing with? Is it with those within his network or with the international community? While Nigeria is going through a very difficult route right now that many indigenous people are speaking up for their right, he is already... Propose. So the word... Propose. What is the word proposes? Propose. Ask, come up with, introduce, nominate, offer, recommend, request, submit, strong matches. So tonight, we are telling Dr. Akiyomi Adishino that we, the sons and daughters of Yoruba that are his younger brothers, we love him, we appreciate the work he has done in this global world today. We are currently against this proposed to remain inside this contraction, this evil entity that was forced on the 220 million innocent people that did not negotiate this amalgamation. We don't have any problem with him as a person, but we don't trust this propose because this is part of what was cooked when they were proposing with Lugard 
to lock us into what is known as the fraudulent amalgamation. So whenever we hear the word propose, we should wake up quickly without sleeping because remember that we are still dealing with this problem of the 1914 amalgamation. What we don't want to deal with again in the future is what this man is talking about. So go go mo yoruba to ban gbo mi ni ale e tete tu ma fi sinu adura yin tori pe awon re wo ba soro gbo agbaye lo ngbo won loto agbaye ngbo wa na but wo ti gbo wa ni tori pe a ti de bi koko bi to e ko gbo de but iru ele ti soro nisin awon african union ti to ti pike america ti pike europe ti pike because he's a very global man. So this is the reason why I have come out. We are not fighting him, but we do not agree that nothing should be proposed because he got proposed in 1914. So we are pleading with these, our brother, to come out and say that we don't want Nigeria, but he's not going to do that because is one of those people, as one of our comments says here, maybe is working for those internal people against the vision of the Biafra and the Yoruba, the Arewa and the Middle Belt. We are tired of this shit old country called Nigeria amalgamation. We don't even want to hear anything called the United States of Nigeria. We are fed up. What we want to be hearing is our own independent Yoruba country and nothing else. Keke Oku says the globalist puppet will not support the dissolution of Nigeria. And we know that African Development Bank is getting their funding from different sources. He doesn't own the money that is disbursing. He is giving the money and he helps them to manage where the money goes within Africa for the purpose of development. Toski, best good evening to you. Very, very important that this is why I say to us on this program, we remain focused and we are searching, we are beam light. A lot of things is happening that what Ayini Mate Teri and I will bring it to your screen and you would look at it and you will either agree with me or disagree with me or if you are one of those that agree with us on the self-determination which is our inalienable right. Dr. Adeshino knows this very well. The United Nations, the African Union, even though this is not enriched or embedded in the fraudulent 1999 constitution and like one of the senior advocate of nigeria said maybe before we go into more of the reading because i want dr adeshino he might not have the time to sit and watch a full broadcast but i want him to pick as many when he's moving into this section of this program in case he listen Emmanuel Shegun, and I didn't get the last name. Uh, let's see if I can get the last name. Eyomo Baba, Dr. Akim Adeshino, wrote to me, Emmanuel Ati Shegun, Ape Yifuku, Ape Yifanu, Ape Baba Yifuku, Eba Baba Bain Soro, Kwe Awo, Fe Nigeria Mu. I don't know whether you are lost living in Nigeria or not. That is not my problem. Wherever you live, I don't live in Nigeria as well. But we do not agree with your father, on this particular word that we should keep Nigeria again. Mukiawa Ola Jire Koka. Let's allow Dr. Adeshino Akiwumi to listen to this that Nigeria is not one. If the constitution maintains by section two that Nigeria is one indissoluble uh, nation and you know doesn't provide for means or procedure by which a people or a particular uh, sector of the of the of the of, of the nation a, a, a federating people can choose to say 
at this particular point we want to have a nation of our own and it doesn't provide for a peaceful means by which this can be guaranteed there will always be frictions that will be leading to violence killings and bloodshed and to avoid this it is imperative that we look at that provision of section 2 that says that Nigeria is one indissoluble indestructible entity that doesn't make provision for the procedure by which a people can advance the right to self-determination. There have been many occasions where, I mean, on so many occasions we hear from the Arewa uh, People's, uh, people, uh, people's uh, Congress or whatever agitating that, yes, if Nigeria cannot work, they want to go on their own, they be, by, they be Afra, agitators are there, we have the Odua Nation and what have you. If the Constitution provides for a procedure to determine peacefully whether a people can separate from Nigeria, you see that some of these agitations might be completely quenched. For instance, let me give you one. Tomorrow now, if, you, if, we, if we provide for referendum or plebiscite, these are political procedures for determining whether a nation or a, uh, a nation in a country, because I want to take the definition of a nation here to mean the ethnic nationalities, maybe the Yoruba nation, the Igbo nation, the Arawa nation, or Ijoy, Ibiobio, and what have you. Now, if a people can uh, be entitled to write to call for plebiscite that can be supervised by international organs like the United Nations and what have you, it can be safely and easily determined that, okay, these people in this particular area has done in 1960, in 1959-60, if, if my recollection is right, with the people of the southern uh, part of uh, Cameroon, who formed part of Nigeria before, but when they decided that no, they wanted to be on their own, then a plebiscite was conducted and they were able to have a separate nation of their own. If we say Nigeria is in the soluble entity and will not tolerate any agitation, by which people can determine whether they want to be on their own, definitely we are only calling for crisis on our own net. Tomorrow now, if you subject it to plebiscite, that okay, people of the Igbo nation should decide whether they want to be part of Nigeria or they want to have a nation of their own. You might find a situation that the majority may say they prefer to be in Nigeria rather than having a Biafra. And that will silence the people who are agitating. And if people who are agitating are in the majority by virtue of the plebiscite, why not allow such to just take place peacefully so that there is, no, there is no sense in remaining one single entity by force that may lead to bloodshed and you know, what, may be, what may even be characterized as genocide because a situation where that is Mr. allowed, okay. then we have descended below the level of humanity. So there are, these are some of the provisions. Well, going to the political level, uh, to some of the political angle that may require some intervention. Let me quickly catch up with some of the comments that is coming through uh, with a super chat and more comments as well. Mrs. Comfort Olobunja Adupalawai, uh, mommy, for the love and the support to this Yoruba nation quest in the last three and a half years, like so many of our mothers as well. Uh, you also went to say, more strength, Koiki media, no gossip media. You also went further to say there will be no United States of Nigeria which is what we are discussing. We are not here to bring any name calling to Dr. Kim Additional. We are just saying that we do not want a restructure United States of Nigeria. So you say there will be no United States of Nigeria. Never, never. Nigeria can never be united. This man said the Nigerian population is penciled in the into the 400 million plus and the Yoruba nation self-determination matters to the Yoruba people. Paris TV, good evening to you. Rahim Abbas, quickly well done for the job you do. Thank you so much. And uh, keep the comment coming. The rest is sure I will pick on it. And if I miss it, uh, Mr. Debayo, and your midday actor say, we need a separate nation. Without Yoruba nation, I don't think we need to settle for anything. Yoruba nation, no going back. And before we go further, let us remind people that the same right that we have is the same right that the Scottish people have. It's the same right that everybody have for those that are calling for the right to self-determination. Do not let anybody intimidate us. We are not the only one talking about it. Even Benny Sandy was asked this 
Maybe Dr. Akio may miss this, and I want to see this. There is one constitutional issue in the UK that I'm really to genuinely to know what your opinion is on it, and that's Scottish independence. Look, it might be something that you haven't given much thought to, but over here it's such a live debate because, of course, we're looking for a new uh, leader of the Scottish National Party. And one of the arguments is that, look, Scotland tends to attack more left politically. They've obviously had a Conservative uh, government in Westminster for over a decade. What, what's your instinct on it? What's your gut say? Look, I, I, I'm not an expert on UK politics. Uh, I very much appreciate what the people of Scotland have done, what they're fighting for. And my you know, initial thought, not being an expert, mm -hmm. they want to go their own way, they should be allowed to. So you think they should at least have the opportunity to... to that would seem say. to me... Don't tell anybody I said that. Don't right? worry, that's just between us. OK. Don't worry, it won't go anywhere. <laughs> Other countries were refused at first, but we have to remember, and this is a really important point, that self-determination is an inalienable international right and a law as well. And other countries will recognise Scotland's democratic choice expressed at the ballot box. Um, they will recognise that because that is the route that many other countries have taken in order to become independent. And just to make that point that international law is very pragmatic on that point. So we should have. And we should have confidence. And I hope Dr. Akiomi Adishina will have the confidence that the Yoruba people are more than enough to start a country of their own. So let's read a little bit more. The president of the African Development Bank Group, Dr. Akiomi Adishina, has called for a change of name from the Federal Republic of Nigeria to the United States of Nigeria. I want us to take note of this. Moki Toski Best, good evening, it is me from Aja. Oh, okay, Moki Edada, brother, I'm Banki Alaja. Ati Bubo, Amuti Wawani, Aja. Moki Bubo, Moki Bubo, Toa Kakiri, Titi De, Kogi, Ati Kwara State, Ati Nito Wani, Benin Republic. Babawa, Akim additional Eunice Echechi, my beautiful Biafra sister, good evening and welcome. And like I said, one day I'll be in Canada with your family. You will have the privilege to eat a deep kai corn and a bono soup with some nice fufu. And I hope you can make those cookies because I'm not going to eat uh, McDonald's when I come to your house. So make sure you get that ready. As we say here, uh, it is a platform that educates, is a platform that talks about the Yoruba people that are ready to get the hell out of Nigeria. But the president of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akil Adishino, and uh, you know, his face is the one below, and that's his face again there, he's a very important man that we've talked about his background. He's calling for a change of name. He wants us to bear the name Fedra no, he wants us to change from Federal Republic of Nigeria to United States of Nigeria. I don't know who and who they are discussing this way, but these are powerful individuals. And whatever is talking about, it means that there is already some work behind the scene. And I just want to increase the front of this. So whatever you are hearing from this man might indicate that it is already a work in place. Because Kotoli was so sita, and we are not Kotoli power base in sort of Yoruba nation. It is something that we've deliberated, we've talked about, and then we came out and said we want Yoruba nation. Who and who is Dr. Akim Adishino talking to? Is it within his colleagues, his friends, or is he just putting that to us, the Yoruba people, whether we will buy into that, or is he just talking to President Bola Metinobu? Who and who is he telling? about this United States of Nigeria. So let's read further. And we hope we get justice from Mubad. Hmm. Adeshino said this in a statement by his special advisor on industrialization. We know that we lost industrialization in Nigeria just after uh, you know, the Western region. The military came in and made sure that everything Baba Lolowa did was completely destroyed. Idris, good evening to you. And Idris says this is like another colonization in the making. And we have to keep our eyes on the ball. 
you don't lose focus because these little little things before you know it will erupt and people will now be saying i think that was what i did this is the reason why i am searching the day on the social media online and offline to see what our elite are discussing so that we do not get caught up then consume family according to the statement from additional special advisor on industrialization another very powerful yoruba man called professor banji oyelaron oyeyinka made available to punch online on saturday the 30th of march 2024 Maki sister Meyeti Queen, a very beautiful you know, interview you did with Omoluka, and you always say the way it is. And I'm not sure whether you've come across this, but the headline is that Dr. Akil Marishino is now saying, proposing that we change from Federal Republic of Nigeria to United States of Nigeria. I don't know who and who they're proposing this and who and who they're discussing this with. Um, we remember that last week there was a lecture that was delivered as the recipient of the 2024 Obafemi Awolowo Prize for Leadership. You would think that somebody that has enjoyed part of the regional government to some extent, somebody that knows Baba Awolowo very well, is now trying to change some narrative that we shouldn't call it FEDRA. Maybe when we call it the United States of Nigeria, we will love each other and we will unite as one entity, which I know we cannot. So in Tibaba in Sonikwe, professor banji these are powerful yoruba professors that should be in the same line with professor adebanji akitoye but for reason known to them they are in a different part away from what we are doing let's go further uh additional as we said was quoted to have made the call in a lecture he delivered as the recipient of the 2024 Obafemi Awolowo Prize for Leadership, tied to making a new Nigeria. <laughs> Imagine they are telling us to start making a new Nigeria. As we are saying Nigeria is dead, this one are saying we should keep making a new Nigeria. Okay. He delivered as the recipient of the 2024 Obafemi Awolowo, and the title was Making a New Nigeria, a welfare risk policies and a people centered development. Let's look at the world welfare. In this country, we get a lot of people that have been taken care of by the government. Welfareism. So when we use the word welfareism, the principles of policies associated with a welfare state. A lot of people are benefiting in this country regardless of your status, whether you have the right to be here or not, you will still be taken care of to some extent. The country that you believe in, where you were born, you go to the hospital, you do not have access to being taken care of. You will just be kept outside until death comes to you. So, we also know that the policies will never happen in a country like Nigeria because for a very, very long time, the world policies has never worked. And when we talk about policy, P-O-L-I-C-Y, every policy in Nigeria has failed since the establishment of Nigeria in 1914. We know that the policies that have been given to us have never favored us. And I'm going to take us to my website, www.koikimedia.com. There's some brilliant work that have been done by some of our colleagues in the past that took us to some kind of background to what we should know. So when you go on my website, there's a lot of things there. You can click on the Yoruba document files uh, and you'll be seeing a lot of things that have been done in the past. And I want us to go to the particular one which uh, Baba Rukwari and Dr. Aliu did some few, some few years back. And that has got to do. So there's a lot of things on my website. Please always visit it. Uh, you know, you know, you read a lot of things and document that we have there. So, yeah. Now let's look at this. The pathway to Yoruba nation and its benefits. So when we talk about policies, for a very long time, we have been marginalized 
from the northern part of Nigeria because census was read by Britain in 1960 as we were going into independence and that was the reason why you know you know the northerners won the election and Babaola were lost. This is my one, two, three. Say, let's be serious and ask Dr. Akewumi what is going to be Nigeria per capita income in 2050. If he's campaigning for the United States of Nigeria in 2024, the per capita income is $2,000 in 2023. So let's look at some of these. Number one, the problem in position of the 1999 fraudulent constitution. And we have a lot of videos to back that. I can play that, but we cannot have to waste too much time. We've played those videos, but because we have a special guest that might watch this video called Dr. Akiwumi Adishino, or maybe some of his friends or his advisor, and they might be able to explain to him that Omo, talking about this Nigeria, Yoruba people are no longer interested. So that is the reason why I would just add this for Dr. Akiwumi Adishino, that the imposition of the fraudulent 1999 constitution would not allow us to work. Yeti Quinn said in my last presentation with Omaluka, I made mention of some Yoruba elite behaving like stupid. Akinwomi is a typical example of those people I cited in the presentation, educated illiterate. Again, let's listen and advise Akinwomi Adishino on the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria from Chief Olani Peku. We have problems in And the problems, I want to say this, I might be, I might be you know, off the cuff. It's because of our constitution. How so? Nigeria is not operating any constitution known to honesty and trend in group faith, brought about by unanimity of the people, acceptable to federalism. And again, that is also, we also have that problem with the judiciary. Because of the Nigerian situation, we have a unitary system. That's what we run. Hydra headed. Don't let us pretend. And I've said it over and over, and I'll continue to say it. And that's unitarism has also created to the judiciary. Today, the entire Nigerian judiciary is, is unitarized. The Supreme Court is federal, Federal Court of Appeal, I mean, the Court of Appeal is federal, Federal High Court is federal, FCT is federal, National Industrial Court is federal, Customary Court of Appeal or the Federal High Court is federal, Sharia Court of Appeal, the Federal High Court is federal, all juri jurisdictions. That the Kyodia is just of this world, that the Oputas of this world, that the Belos of this world, when they wind their respective high courts exercised, making the lot of it profound, succulent, rich, exciting, they are now vested in the different federal high courts or federal courts. We're talking of how to reform the system. There is no justification in a state, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a nation like Nigeria, purporting. To practice federalism, where even the Supreme Court should be overboarding with unnecessary jurisdiction in respect of land matters from Yoruba land, in respect of divorce, in respect of family matters, citizenship matters. How do they know? I don't want us to be deceiving ourselves. Assuming I'm even appointed to the Supreme Court today, I'm above the age, but assuming, and I'm sitting there, and you bring a matter on appeal in respect of Kanuri native law and custom or Igbo native law and custom, or Igbo land, Igbo land tenure system, and I sit there, and I'm writing judgment. I'm a Yoruba man. What do I know about that? That those kind of cases to stop at the state, either Court of Appeal or Supreme Court. Go to the United States of America. The state has its own Supreme Court. We are running into trouble. We are inching there, and time is not in our favor. And I'm not tickled by what the National Assembly is doing. They are not being fair to themselves, they are not being fair to us. They claim to be amending the constitution. What are, what are they amending? And I want to repeat it. Do you amend something that is not amendable? When you want to amend the constitution, by the way, Lati, where do you start? You start from the preamble. We the people. Oh yes, they have to amend it. Why are they running away from it? If they cannot amend the preamble, if the preamble is not amendable, then it means the constitution is not amendable. Come on. They have to start from it. Do you start reading your letter from the back page? Do you? No, they have to start from the preamble. That means the preamble is fake. We the people, who are the we? When did we meet? And why can't we do it? I've studied the constitutions of the world. And I say this also with every sense of humility. There is no constitution that is near as fake. Near as deceitful. 
Nay, as make believe in nature and in content as the constitution, as the, what we call the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, as amended. President Tinubu needs to put his best foot forward to govern the country. If he does that, in four years, he can turn things around. But there are certain critical things he would need to do. The first thing is to say, what's the constitution? If, for instance, me and my wife Lillian don't agree in our marriage of 45 years, then we can't do anything. So the first thing that President Tinubu would need to do is to ensure that Nigerians all agree to be one country. You recall that uh, Bolaige asked those two questions. Do we want to be one? It's not by force. If we want to be one, how? We haven't answered those questions. Which is why I told President Babi of the Senate that it has taken 23 years to solve the problem of the Constitution. And I urged him, in conjunction with President Tinubu, to resolve the Nigerian constitutional question now by inviting the owners of Nigeria. The owners of Nigeria, mark you, were those who owned Nigeria before Lugard brought his amalgamation in 1914. Call them in. These are the people who own the country. And ask them questions. What do you want to see of the constitution? Because without a constitution, we're going nowhere. And no one will doubt the fact that the constitution bequeathed by the military in 1999 is unsatisfactory. You can't build anything out of a weak foundation. The economic development policy of President Tinubu, the political uh, development policy of President Tinubu, and everything else he wants to do rests on a very solid foundation. So let him immediately resolve that. How can we spend 23 years looking for a foundation for building a house? Does that make sense to anybody? So that's my number one um, uh, uh, issue. We need to resolve this issue of, do we want to be one? And mark you, the flip side of the question is that we mustn't be one. Because Yugoslavia, which was six countries under Marshal Tito, when he died, decided to break apart. And today, a lot of them are very strong countries, Macedonia, Croatia, Slovenia, Slovakia, they're all doing well. So there is no sacrosanctity about Nigeria being one country. There's none. I personally would wish for Nigeria to be one country, but we must agree. Now, that is the problem. Because we have not agreed, and because the National Assembly has appropriated to itself the all-knowing wisdom of giving us a constitution, that is the weakness. You've listened to that. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Shagun want to say, Abakuba, you know the answer to our problem. I beg, tell them for Abuja, the National Assembly. Uh, this man said the per capita income of the UK is $48,529. That is the average income per person in the UK. Once again, thank you so much to Mrs. Yesunde Olukoya. Exclusive 300, uh, Jamal 419, and many of you that have joined us on all the platforms. As I continue to educate the Yoruba people and many Nigerians, reason why we need to break away, we are discussing this discussion from what Dr. Akiwumi Adishino is proposing that we change the name from the Federal Republic of Nigeria into the United States of Nigeria. But I was giving us some background before we went into that fraudulent constitution. In position of the 1999 constitution, we the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, when did we sign this constitution? Having firmly and solemnly resolved to live in the unity and harmony as one, indivisible, indissolubly, sovereign nation under God dedicated to the promotion of internal African solidarity, world peace, international cooperation and understanding. You can find this document on my website, www.quakimedia.com. We know that things have changed after this was put out during Buhari's regime because Tinubu is now in power. Tinubu has also done the same thing that Buhari did, which is marginalization, giving the juicy position to the Yorubas 
and I guess by the time Tinubu finish, the same thing goes back to the north. I'm not sure whether the Igbos will ever become the president of this United States of Nigeria as proposed by Dr. Kyung Adishino. But why Buhari was there was when this came out. So marginalization of the Yoruba and other nationalities. So it seems like it has gone the other way around now. Even though the Yoruba might be happy, but that will just be for four years tenure of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in office. As at that time, we have the Minister of Justice, Abuba Kamalami. We have the Chief Justice of the Federal, the Secretary Architect of the country. As at the time, things have changed now. The Chief of Army Staff was the, you know, the Northerners, Chief of Naval Staff, uh, the Director of the SSS, the one that one is still there, Yusuf Maga, uh, Magaji Bichi. And that is why most of you want me to come back home so that we can get arrested by the crazy DSS. The Director General of the Nigerian Intelligence Agency is no longer in the hands of those individuals, but that is not the area I want us to really go into. So I'm going to move it swiftly, but okay, I think we can see that the headquarters, we can start from here, headquarters of institution in Nigeria as it stands today, even though Tinubu is the president, the North are not very comfortable that Tinubu wants to start moving things out of the southern area from Abuja. But let me give you some of the wrap up of where institution has been kept in Nigeria. Even some of them do not have the waterways like the Navy, yet they kept it in the northern part of Nigeria. The Nigerian Defense Academy, NDA, is in Kaduna State. The Nigerian Police Academy, NPA, is in Wuda in Kano State. The Nigerian Army University, BU, is in Bonu State. The Nigerian University Commission, NUC, is in FCT, Abuja. The National Board for Technical Education, NBTE, is in Kaduna. The National Commission for Colleges of Education, NCCE, is in Kaduna. Note, the Nigerian Law School Lagos headquarters was relocated to Abuja in 1997. Abuja, Kanu, Yola, Enugu, Bayasa, and Jos. Again, Nigeria is retarding our progress and the development, the problem with Nigeria. The insecurity hasn't changed, even though we have evidence based that since President Bola Tinubu came to power, over 700 Nigerians have died every month in the last 10 months. So it does not matter that whether Tinubu is in the government, he's not been able to tackle the insecurity and he has not given the full clear that these individuals are not that bandits, they are full terrorists. So when you look at this headline on the Vanguard on the 23rd of March 2024, the killing fields, 6,931 people have been killed by terrorists under President Bola Tinubu. That's average of 10 in a month. And right on the top there, you can see that the federal government fresh borrowing drive up Nigeria public debt to 97.3 trillion. So let's go further. Fulani militants are becoming very powerful and we have a lot of videos to back that all the time that we've shown you and we continue to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you one right now just behind my scene uh, where you'll be able to see the welding Fulani terrorists operating inside the southeast, the southwest, the north. They've not allowed us to grow a economy to make it fruitful for the Yoruba people and the rest of Nigeria. So what you're looking right now, these are full any terrorists that I want you to keep your eyes on. There's more armed robbery, either Yoruba, Igbo, Aousa, that is just the normal thing around the world. There's a lot of armed robbery as well in UK. Abject poverty, Nigeria remained the world poverty capital as we speak today. Massive looting of the public treasury. That is something that has collapsed Nigeria in the last 63 years. The wealth that is taken from the southwest of Yoruba land has been niched for so many fusurious you know, things that sometimes there is no accountability. Mismanagement of public fund, ethnic religious crisis. These are some of the problems. Okay, so when some of you say it's all about Fulani, no, Fulani is just a small minority of what is our problem. Our problem is more than Fulani killing us. There's marginalization, there's bribery, there's corruption, there's nepotism, there's favorism. Nigeria has the fourth most deadliest terrorist in the group, known as the Fulani X-Men. Instant strikes in our tertiary institution. Remember that Buhari shut down the university for almost nine months. 
Healthmen attack, crime and terrorism. Many of you have completed a lot of your education, but you've not been able to get a job. That means there's high rate of unemployment in the Yoruba land, even though during the Western region, people were proud to go back home and contribute their quota. A lot of us have lived now in Europe for 30, 40, 20 years, and nobody knows when we're likely to go back home. Yes, we go back home for holiday on a short note. We go and visit people, we go and party, but we've not been able to go back and build the Yoruba land as we would have loved to build it, just as we are building other countries around the world. Inadequate infrastructures have killed the whole country in the southwest and other regions. There is no unity among the major ethnic groups and there will never be one. No unity among the major ethnic groups more than a century. Poor network of road across the region even though we have the largest bitumen in Africa and the second in the world. But yet, nobody has a good road to your father's compound. There is a lot of poor health facilities. Even the late governor Akere Dolu took health care in Germany just as the present administration of Tinubu continued to take its treatment in France. Monocultural economy for the last 63 years, many of you are still using power ban because there is no stable electricity. How the federal allocation is shared, I want you to take your pen and paper and take note of this. Equality is 40%. Population is 30%, IGR effort is 10%, land mastering is 10%, social development factors is 10%, education 4%, health 3%, and water 3%. How the federal allocation, and that is in the graphs as well as you can see there. Once again, we will come back here to where we are discussing the issue that additional want a proposed United States of Nigeria. Now, Let's look at the number of House of Representatives that are representing us in Abuja from the lower chamber and the upper chamber. The Southeast, 43. House of Reps, Senators, 15. South South, 71. House of Rep members, Senators, 18. In the Southwest, 55 House of House members of House of Rep. And then we have 18 senators. In total, we have 169 House of Rep members from the South, and then we have 51 senators. Let's see the numbers from the North. The Northwest House of Rep, we have 92. You can tell that the numbers is much more than the rest of the other region. They have 21 senators. Again, they are much in numbers. The Northeast have 48 House of Rep members and they have 18 Senators. The North Central have 49 members of House of Reps and they also have 18 Senators. So when people say go back to speak to your representative so that you can get a referendum clause in the Constitution, you don't have the numbers. You will not get representative even if we join on with the Southeast, you cannot defeat the North. So you can see the gimmicks that have been played on us for a very long time. The North Central, 49-18, FCT also have two, and Senator one. So the total number, and I want you to take note of that, the total number of the North, West, North East, North Central, and FCT stand at 191 House of Rep members and 58 Senators. If I take you one step back, you will see that we have 169 from the southeast, the south south, and the southwest, and we have 51 senators. So let's look at the numbers again. Zone: the southeast have five states, the south south have six states, the southwest have six states. Total 17 states. How do you defeat the north when Britain created a fraudulent sensor that have now become much more than who we are as Yorubas? So the Northwest have seven states, the Northeast have six states, the North Central have six states, total 19. Remember, the total state that we have in the Southeast, South, South, Southwest is 17. That means there are two states ahead of us. That is why some Yoruba people are saying that they need more state. You don't need more state. We need a total dissolution out of Nigeria. Let's look at the, the number of local government. The North State have 419 local government, while the Southern State have 357 local government. In total, we have 774 local government. The Yoruba have 
191 local government out of that. Now, let's look at the most federal allocation depending on state, the FEC share of revenue. And this is coming from statistics from the National Bureau of Statistics in 2020. Jigawa state contribution to the federal government was contribution from the federal government allocation that got 92. Contribution from the state revenue is 8%. Castina contribution from the federal allocation was 92%. Contribution from the state revenue was 8%. Yobi, 91% was the contribution from the federal allocation, while um, 9% was from the state. Uh, I know that image of Abakito is blocking that, so let's reduce that a little bit so that uh, you can see the screen properly. Once again, my name is Olami Koike, and we're watching a live transmission giving you the reason why the Yoruba are losing out as we continue to remain part of this contraction from Nigeria. Taraba State, the contribution from the federal allocation is 90%, while the contribution from the state revenue is 10%. Shokoto State, 89% contribution from the federal allocation, while contribution from the state revenue is 11%. Adamawa State, 91% contribution from federal allocation while 9% from the state. In reverse, we get 36% contribution from the federal allocation while we are also contributing 64% from Lagos state. Now, the most FEC dependent zone share of revenue in 2020. Again, this is coming from the statistics of the National Bureau. The Northeast 90% Northwest 84.1%, North Central 76.6%, South South 76.6%, Southeast 81.4%, Southwest in Yoruba land 53.4%. And this is just a graph as it is. So the Northern State 83%, while the Southern Nigeria is 68.2%. The fake, I'm sure you know what that means. You know, the federal. You know allocation that comes every month again when you look at the that southern state 45 percent the northern state 55 percent so there is no way that the yoruba people will gain anything from this representative in abuja if you are going through asking them to allow the constitution to be changed the north will refuse that now let's look at the internal generated revenue this is the money that each state were generating in the southwest is about 560 pounds, and the south south was 263, and the northwest yeah, was 146. North central was 181, southeast was 96, uh, and that's like in billions, okay? The northeast was 54. This is the source from the National Bureau of Statistics. So, 1 trillion, 360 billion, 27. 20, uh, 75 million, 20,999 Naira, 99 Cobra only. So when you look at all these, you can see that we have been ripped off for a very long time in Nigeria. We have not made any headway. So I just wanted to show these and I want you to go back. Let's listen more to Akil Marishino from this video. Speak at this inauguration lecture for the incoming president of Nigeria. It is such a great honor to share my views and perspectives after the wonderful speech that has been given by my very dear friend and brother, His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta, as our nation gets ready to have a passing of the baton between His Excellency President Mohammed Buhari and the incoming president, His Excellency Ashiwaju Ahmed Bola Tinumbu. It is your turn. <laughs> I wish to congratulate you, Mr. President, for your stewardship against difficulties of our nation for the past eight years. And thank you most sincerely, Mr. President, for your support for me as president of the African Development Bank. People say great things about what, by God's grace, we've been able to achieve. But unless I was sent on a mission and supported on that mission, 
it would not have been possible. I'd like to thank you, Mr. President, because without your support in 2015, and you're standing beside me and behind me in the rough times of 2020, I will not be president of the African Development Bank. <laughs> Mr. President, I was brought up as a kid to always go back to their elders and thank them. And we always say that the person who sent you on an errand is the person you go back to to thank and give the report back to. And so I'll just say two things as I thank you because I will not have another opportunity to thank you. The African Development Bank, Mr. President, was ranked this year as the most transparent financial institution in the world. And last year, Your Excellency, Mr. President, the African Development Bank was ranked as the best multilateral financial institution in the world. And so as you take leave as president, please accept my deepest gratitude, because without your support, I wouldn't have been there. And I want to thank you so much that you can take pride in these achievements as you go. And my dear brother, Bishop Kuka, was talking about Nigerian. I am proudly Nigerian. I will live as a Nigerian. I'll die as a Nigerian. Now you got the message. He's a proud Nigeria. He will live as Nigeria and he will die as a Nigeria. So what I don't know is who and who Dr. Kim Adishino is having conversation with and proposing this crazy idea that calls itself United States of Nigeria. Even with all the indices that this country is falling apart and it's falling apart very fast. Mrs. Margaret, the big joker, say no electricity, no good roads, no good network, no health care services, poor water supply, no provision of employment, no adequate security, stealing and corruption is the order of the day on every level. But so let me talk good morning. Ashatiche TV, Orine de Yoruba, La Fer, Pedroche, Le Dumari. So if you're one of those that are in support of this crazy idea by Bishop uh, Dr. Akio Marishino, just know that you are one of those that is holding the life of millions of innocent indigenous people backwards. I'm going to play more of this video, but let's again go back to the, you know, the write-up that we were reading earlier. And that says this. He explained that a change to the United States of Nigeria would change the relation, the, the relational mindset between the state and Abuja, stating that the fulcrum will be the state while the center will support them, not the Lord over them. He said, we must be audacious instead of the federal government of nigeria we could think of the united states of nigeria the old way give way to the new we would change the relational mindset between the state and abuja the full crown will be the state while the center will support them not the lord over there with good governance better accountability systems zero tolerance for corruption more economical, stronger constituent state would emerge. We would unleash massive wealth across the state. A new Nigeria will arise to do so. We will need all of us, not some of us. So, Baba Yi Sofun Akwe Kaloma Amurasile for a new Nigeria, even though a lot of them know that there's nothing called new Nigeria. That has failed long time ago. Tokyo underscore seven seven eight good be Baba Olufunke Shukende. Thank you so much for joining. From our forgotten rural villages to our boisterous and dynamic urban areas, from the sparks of desire in the eyes of our children to the lingering hope in the heart of our youth, from the yearnings of our women and mothers and our fathers for a better tomorrow and the desires of the old that our end will be better than our past. From the hard-working street vendors and small businesses to the largest business conglomerates, 
we must create a movement of hope. So he is already saying that Kaloma Murasile through a hope that cannot work. Asha Tiche says Latin 1960. He added that the achievement of the economical viable entities and the viability of the national entity requires constitutional changes to devolve more economic and fiscal powers to the state or region. But the politicians do not want the constitution to be changed. What they've been doing is what they call amendment. And when we are talking about the parliamentary system of government, let's be very, very careful. It's another 419 because Togo just had a constitution change. And that means that the present president of Togo will remain as a president for a very long time. We're going to use a video from a sister broadcast, uh, which is the first post that I've listened to. And it's a good thing that after a quick search, it came back with that constitutional coup in Togo. This could be another idea that the APC might inject and allow them to remain in power for a very long time. So let's be very careful. But let's listen to this analysis because the Togo constitution, a plot to keep President Ghana Simba in power. Let's listen to it and make my mind. from Africa from the West African nation of Togo. On Monday, Togo adopted a new constitution. They moved from a presidential to a parliamentary system. On the face of it, it sounds like a good thing. The presidential system has often been exploited, used to impose a dictatorship in many parts of Africa. So a new system with the parliament in charge should be a good thing. But in the case of Togo, that may not be the case. Critics say this move will actually benefit Togo's president, For Nasing Bey, whose family has ruled the country for 57 years. Togo's new system may prolong his grip on power. So critics are calling this a constitutional coup. Our next report explains. On Monday, in one fell swoop, Togo's ruling party changed the rules. They adopted a new constitution and changed the country's government from a presidential system to a parliamentary one. So there has been a rebalancing of the powers of the head of state and the powers of the president of the cabinet who becomes prime minister. From now on, you win the parliament, you run the country. It's that simple. The new term of the president of the republic is six years non-renewable. It's a new dawn for Togo. The president will now be a ceremonial figurehead. He or she won't be elected by the people anymore. Instead, parliament will designate someone to fill the post. Togo's lawmakers say that now it is the parliament that will be in charge. It's a monumental change, coming less than a month before the country goes to polls. Does this mean that democracy is on the rise? You see, Togo is a country that has been ruled by one family for 57 years. The current president, For Nasingbe, is a second-generation autocrat. His father, Nasingbe Eyadema, came to power via coup and proceeded to rule Togo for almost 38 years. He died in office back in 2005, and then his son took over the presidency. So, by the sounds of it, this is progress. Togo will finally be free of the long-ruling dynasty. If not now, then after six years, when the new single presidential term ends. But if that's really the case, why is Togo's opposition furious? Today, we are also calling on the Togolese people to unite to say no to the changing constitution, which is why we have called our group, Don't Touch My Constitution. Enough is enough. It is over. We are going to fight. Everyone knows they violated Article 52 and 59. Enough is enough. We've been piling on, accepting the unacceptable for decades. Togo's opposition thinks that a sinister game is afoot, a plot to keep President For Nasingbe in power even longer. The president took office in 2005 
a coup followed his father's death and paved the way for Nasingbe Jr.'s rise. He has ruled Togo ever since, for almost 19 years now. Togo officially has a presidential term limit, but every few years there's a tweak and miraculously the term limit gets reset. This has allowed Nasingbe Jr. to contest and win four elections so far. This hmm, Africa. I hope you got the message. So let's come back again and get more from Akim Narishino. But let me read some of the comments coming through very fast. Silver Badmore says, I think they have to enlighten this man very well. Let him know what is going on in the country. This man said, Dr. Akiomi, as an economics, must answer the basic question. What is going to be the Nigerian per capita income in 2050? Income per person. All these people are not answering the basic question. Uh, Mrs. Comfort Olubunja said, this additional is just about his own selfish interest. Want millions of Yoruba people to suffer and some to be killed by Fulani. See what some Yorubas are doing deceptful. And we have some of our listeners on the Mixella, Kogumala Bjorn say the idiot should carry the useless proposal to Simon Ekpa in Finland. Simon Ekpa is a sword already, and he also went to say fire will soon touch every one of them. Good evening once again to those of you that have joined us. And as we are now entering the uh, one hour 46 minutes, this program will not be more than two hours. So we have about 20 minutes to play with. So let me just touch more a little bit on the video of Akimi Adishino and then we start winding down. I would like to appreciate every single one of you that have joined me tonight and those of you that will have the privilege to watch it later. And the Usman, thank you so much. Undi, you know, very thank you so much. And Tomide Osho, thank you so much. And many of you that we probably will not be able to mention the names because we cannot see you on the trail. Mr. Fab say he's part of the evil game planner. Yawa Adiat Abdewali all the way in Anja says Ola Mikoiki, good morning to you. Thank you so much. Eko Umbeo Ali Emiushu. So, Eja Kakpada, also do Akio Marishino. Thanks. I'll ask for permission. Resurrection Day. If I might just hold a green, white, green flag with my hand, and that would be great. I would like to congratulate the incoming president, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, GCFR, who will take over the mantle of leadership from Nigeria, from you. I'm delighted that my very dear friend, President Uhuru Kenyatta, the former president of Kenya, was invited to deliver the inauguration lecture. He is a great leader, not only in Kenya, a great leader for Africa. And I'm sure you must be wondering, there are actually two Kenyans that are actually here on this panel. Well, I lived in Kenya for many, many years, 10 years in Kenya. And I remember one day, President Goodluck Jonathan took me on a mission to Kenya. And we went to see President Uru Kenyatta. And as the two presidents were introducing members of their delegations, President Jonathan said to President Uru Kenyatta, here is Dr. Adeshina, Minister of Agriculture, to which President Kenyatta responded, yes, Adeshina is the Kenyan on loan to Nigeria. <laughs> we all laughed. Thank you, Mr. President Kenyatta, for what an incredibly powerful speech you gave us to us today. Very, very insightful. Your Excellencies, the election of a new president always elicits hope. Nigeria will be looking to you as President Tinumbu and Vice President Shetima on your first day in office with hope. Hope that you will assure security, peace, and stability. Hope that you will heal and unite a fractious nation. Hope that you will rise above party lines and forge a compelling force to move the nation forward with inclusiveness, fairness, equity, and justice. Hope that you will dramatically improve the economy, which is what I'm going to talk about today. And hope that you will spark a new wave of prosperity. And hope must be brought to the present, as hope deferred makes the heart grow weary. Your Excellencies, the starting point must be macroeconomic and fiscal stability. Unless the economy is revived, and the fiscal challenges addressed boldly, the resources to develop will not be there. No bird can fly if its wings are tied. Nigeria currently faces huge fiscal deficits, estimated at 6% of the GDP. This has been due to several challenges, including low receipts to dwindling revenues from export of crude oil, vandalism of pipelines, 
and illegal bunkering of crude oil. According to Nigeria's Debt Management Office, Nigeria now spends 96% of its revenue service in debt, with the debt-to-revenue ratio rising from 83.2% in 2021 to 96.3% by 2022. Some will argue that the debt-to-GDP ratio at 34% is still low compared to other countries in Africa, and that is absolutely correct. But no one pays their debt using GDP. Debt is paid using revenue, and Nigeria's revenues have been declining. Nigeria earns revenue today to service debt and not to grow. The place to start, therefore, is to remove the inefficient fuel subsidies. Nigerian fuel subsidies benefit the rich, not the poor. Fueling theirs and government's endless fleet of cars. You see, when you hear the word, you know, like the, 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 like the first subsidy is talking about, that in only the rich are enjoying, is it not the same set of his colleagues, his friends? Um, as this program is coming to an end, what I want us to take away today which is the key, not the speech he has granted 10 months ago, is to say to um, Dr. Akiomi Adeshino that we understand your vision because you said even after your death and we don't pray for you to die that you should still hold a Nigerian flag. Well, the Nigerian flag is already deep in the blood and it's going down very, very fast. And nobody can rectify it. Thank you so much, Yoon underscore Innovate. BD says, Akimomi has a selfish interest and dream to become the Zoo Nigerian president. It's just about his selfish interest. Once again, your propose of proposing to change the name is too late. So we advise you to either back down or we, the campaigners of the Yoruba Nation, will continue to give reasons to our Yoruba people why we need to come out of Nigeria as quickly as possible because Nigeria is the impediment to the future that we want there is no future anymore in nigeria that future is gone and you as a very well educated man we expect you to know better but unfortunately you've been advised wrongly by whoever to give us the impression that we should still remain in nigeria like I said, I have not come out to fight you. I have just come out as a brother to advise you that we will not sit back and allow your rhetorics of keeping us together in a contraction like Nigeria. Waris Ginado says, please don't rob and loot your land with English and Oyibo academic credential and tire suit. Additional Dr. Akimumi, Awomo Yoruba, and Kesinyukwe Awau Labe Babawa Alano, Professor Adibanji Akitoyi, Ajoshi Kwawati Nigeria, Kole Sheshimao, Bugwa Niyan Tebashi Nilori Oro Nigeria, Momo Kema Agba Program Yi, Tori Anto Shimon Yi, Nigeria our official Nigeria mo Nigeria is an impediment to our life. Oti ba 
into Jetiwa. But our testimony of Butolani, all we want now is a Yoruba sovereignty. And the this man say we Yoruba nation self-determination campaigners will win this argument based on innovation. The UK debt is three dollars, three trillion US dollars, and the former UK Prime Minister said we need a new economy model. This is will be led by Yoruba. Once again, a inti eba mabai, eba waron shesi. Alan Conde, I have not seen some of the comments. I'm going to read it quickly. Kenzie Abiola say that is lies. He will want that me to come up as no one. Nobody can stop us. Kenzie will also went to say, Mr. Poike, let us get up and fight for ourselves. Let's break it down. I am sure Mukiawa Joke Bodum is up. We want your urban nation now not a united Nigeria. Yoruba citizens are suffering a lot, you said. Alan Kondi, Babawa Adeke Benz is a foundation that they want to place the United States of Nigeria on is very faulty. They know it. They think Pachi Pachi can work. It will never work. Let everyone go their separate ways. I might be no more shall read most of this comment and that's why I'm trying to make sure that we read it out. Ola Milekon Okwe, this last man standing, Koiki Media bringing the world closer to your doorstep. Prince Adebayo she to say good morning. Yawa Joke Bodu is he's not making sense. I think he forget to take his medication. Foolish people all over the world. I guess you're talking to Dr. Kim Adishino. Alan Khan is my question is. Why is it that only the politicians and the criminal working with them, calling themselves a Nigerian and Britain, are Nigerian not we? Because I know where my forefathers come from. Yawa Joke Bodoni says, no light, no road, no network, no hospital, no schools. Everybody lives in poverty. All I want is a nation. Alan Khan is saying, Nigeria is a crime scene, and I think we should have to take Britain to court why they created Nigeria on our behalf of the slave on behalf and also slave our land till now. If I in Malayaye only equato, Baba Koiki, Alan Kondi says Britain need to be taken to International Criminal Court for creating Nigeria and we are not what they call us because these Fulani animals and evil kingdom Britain are working together to slave our land. If any molest of way bear any Baba Mikoiki, there's nothing like the United States of Nigeria. What we want is our freedom, and this is a clear message to the whole world. If any Mole Aye went to say all these prominent people are part of our problem and they are the Western world agent, and most of them will go down before we declare Odua nation. Alan Kondi went further to say. All the nation citizens inside Nigeria must come together with force and to face Britain in the court of international because of the crime against the Yoruba, the Aousas, and the Igbos, and the nations inside Nigeria. All these prominent people are Yoruba land are working for the criminal British system of government. And as I wind down this program this evening, I can only appreciate you know, the back-end team I can only appreciate you know, my family for standing firm to this message of hope. Yawa Comfort, additional, please know now and understand that we don't want Nigeria again. And can't you feel for our people? Question mark. Enough is enough. No more Nigeria, Yoruba nation is all we ask for. Like I said, Bijawaba, Babawa, Dr. Kim, additional. We are just saying that it would be nice to come and present a lot of things that can make Yoruba a strong economy to Professor Banja Kitoye. We will allow you to have access to him so that you can start developing things. But when you talk about the United States of Nigeria, please, you don't own Yoruba land. I know that that is your proposal. You have your right to freedom of speech. But we, the Yorubas, have come up to say that we are not interested in the fake country created by Britain for a purpose known to them alone and it is time that we say enough is enough. 
I say thank you so much. I hope you've learned something. Uh, we hope to be on the search beam again. If we catch up with something else, we will bring it to your screen. Because nobody should not go without saying this, that these are the elite that are holding us back. So in the ones that Koiki, I think that you're nation. These are also individuals that we are dealing with on a daily basis. For a reason known to them, but like I said, Koiti Mujawa, so this platform is all about the truth and we remain focused on the ball we will not be distracted with so much that is going around we want to make sure that we are tapping into what they are saying in terms of these individuals and many of them like that so that we can bring it to the screen and Yoruba people can see why there is not enough push from our elite our elite have become our obstacle and they have been that obstacle for a very very long time muki gugua patapata lili loko muki omode muki agbalaga muki brother meti ojo fun won ma je ni ola i know he's still in america it's still a few more hours mr olajide ajikobi omo odua ijomo ni ilu oro ni kwara state if you have learned one or two things, you can read your comments. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, a lot of you are watching our program. We are getting more new people. I uh, know some of you are very, very uncomfortable with some of my utterances, but like I said, this is a movement, and a movement means that everything will go inside. You come on this platform. If you don't feel comfortable, you have the right to leave, but please do not talk about people that are working hard because it is not an easy task we will remain on top of the ball and we will not close our eyes with two eyes because there's a lot of movement going on and one of that movement is this Femi and uh, Dr. Akim Narishino. this is another movement and I won't be surprised it will spring up very soon but now that we've tackled it by the time it spring up we can say ah, and then we can fire him up but for now i'll keep an eye on him i'll be monitoring him and if i see anything around him again the rest assure i will bring it please don't share things that are irrelevant to me these are the kind of things i want to keep our eyes on that are holding us back when we see them, we call their attention because Nigeria was not a country until 1914, created by Britain for a selfish interest. And that is how we leave you tonight and this morning, this afternoon, Yoruba Nation, no going back, Yoruba Nation for life. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Remember that every donation that you give us goes a long way to support this platform. Even if it's your one dollar, your one cent, your one twenty, your one thirty, your one thousand naira, it keeps us going. Thank you so much to the Biafran that are supporting this platform officially through your comment and also through your donation. And the last comment coming from Baba D Bamidele Ali say, I don't think Femadi Dr. D Akimadi Chino know what is what it is. No light, no road kidnapping terrorism everywhere we stand for your nation not what they say all right along us soon bye for now and happy easter sunday remember to remember that we pray for yoruba land but we walk towards our exit bye for now
Shalom, shalom, shalom. Omayelama soon. Koiki Media bringing the world closer to your doorstep. Good night.